With five channel amplifiers being as popular as they are, one of my personal favorites is the Kenwood Exelon X802.5. I love this amplifier, we do tons of them. I just never known how much power it actually puts out. And today, we're gonna answer that on this episode of Real World Amp Dyno Reviews. Anytime you pick up an amplifier, you always want to read the box. And the reason why that is, is they give you a ton of information on the box. They do that because they feel you're not gonna read the owner's manual. By putting the information here, it could save you some time. And usually it's all the information printed that is the most important. The front of this box really doesn't have a lot, just it tells you it's a class D five channel power amplifier. Stating that it is a class D automatically answers one of those big questions. Flipping it over though brings us a lot more useful information, such as the size of the amplifier. This guy is pretty small at nine and three quarters by six and five eighths and two and one sixteenths tall. It is 50 watts by four and 300 watts by one at four ohms and 75 watts by four and 500 watts by one at two ohms. It is CEA 2006 certified. They're restating the class D amplifier, speaker level inputs and signal sense turn on. This is nice printing this on the back. This allows you to know that if you are going to be hooking up high level to it, you do not have to run the remote turn on because it will look for the signal to activate it. Wired remote control is optional. There again, important information. If you were buying this, for one, it will take a base knob. Two, it doesn't come with it. You have to buy it separately. It is the KCA-RC01A. It's two ohm load capable on all channels and it's a power mod fit switching power supply and then they print it in another language opening the amplifier up the first thing you'll find is this cool bag here this has your high level to low level input your instruction manual and warranty card and some screws the instruction manual is what we call a roadmap. It just opens up into a big piece of paper and on it, it goes through and explains what all the switches, proper input configuration, what any of the input screw down terminals are for, all the gain controls, everything is located on here. Let's take the amplifier out and look on the amplifier. One of the reasons why I like this amplifier so much is its power wire configurations. There's basically two types and they're very important depending on where you're gonna be putting the amplifier, especially when you're looking at something like this, a small size amplifier where you might be hiding it somewhere or putting it up behind a panel. You have wires that come out of the ends here, which means it's a streamlined look if you're putting it in some place where it's gonna rest up against a wall and possibly have a front. That is perfect for coming out of the sides. If you're gonna put it underneath the seat or in a cubby hole, this is where it becomes very handy. It has the power wires coming out of one side here. That way seat rails or anything else that might interfere with the amplifier, a kid kicking it, this is a great style for that. If you flip it up on the end here, we have all our controls. They divide them all into sections, input, crossover. First up is channel A or front. This is 0.2 volts to five volts of input on all three sets of channels. You have your input select on the bottom, sub input. If you're gonna be running three RCAs into this, you'd select sub. If you're running two pairs, a front and rear, you'd select AB. When selecting AB, it will auto populate the subwoofer section of the amplifier. The sub has an 18 dB boost at 45 Hertz. All crossovers are variable between 50 and 200 Hertz. The high pass can be on or off. The sub is default on. On the input side of the amplifier, we have 330 amp fuses, four gauge screw down terminals for the power and ground, the remote turn on, it goes left, right, sub. The sub is what we call an over under. The positive is located at the top. The negative is located at the bottom. The rears or channel B is the bottom. You can bridge the amplifier using the left positive and the right negative terminal. Your optional base knob plugs in here. The high level input is going to plug in below it and your six RCAs are located here going A, B, sub. It also has this little removable panel that is designed to finish off the amplifier and cover up the screw downs. When viewing the amplifier from the top, it just gives it a nice clean look. This amplifier is also high res compatible, it means it has a frequency response of 20 to 50,000 hertz on the high frequency side. And on the subwoofer portion, it is 20 to 200. Let's take a look at the inside of the amplifier and see if it has that nice clean look that the outside has. 
has a multi-level board. Your input section is discreetly located over here. Your crossover and gain control section is discreetly located on this side. So you can see it's a two layer board. Power supply section, stiffening capacitors. And as suspected, it is just as clean on the inside as it is on the outside. That means it's time to get this over to the amp dyno and see what real world power this thing is going to give us. The amplifier hooked up using channel one and two are gonna connect up to the dyno so that we can get the actual power coming out of the high pass side of the amplifier. Then we'll rewire the amplifier and see what the sub channel does as well as we'll bridge channels one and two and three and four. In the meantime, since we're just gonna be using channel one and two output, the other channels connected to a load resistor bank to emulate speakers being connected on it so we can properly tax the power supply to give us a more accurate measurement on our amp dyno. Let's get this thing started. The first run is going to be a certified channel one and two at four ohm. And that gets us a 73 and 79. Next we'll do the two ohm test. Most people won't be running this amplifier at two ohms. I feel the four ohm rating is the most important. That brings us up to a 156 and a 151. Next is gonna be the uncertified four ohm run. And that brought us up to 80 and 82 watts. The two ohm run, 170 and 151. Next is my personal favorite, the dynamic power run, which gives us more of a real world test on the amplifier. 68 and 82. And the last test will be at 2 ohm, which gets us 163 and 148. We're gonna reset and bridge channels one and two and channels three and four. And see what kind of power we get out of that. The first test will be a certified dyno run at 4 ohm. Channels one and two, the fronts, seen here as channel one gives us 325 watts. Channel two, which is the bridge channel three and four, gives us 271 watts at four ohms. Let's do uncertified, and that gives us 325 watts and 271 watts. Dynamic test is next with a 303 for the bridge channels front and a 261 for the bridge channels rear. Let's move on and see what this will do on the subwoofer side. First up is the sub channel certified dyno run at four ohms and we get a 420 watts. Next is the two ohm load and that gives us 608 watts. Uncertified four ohm is next with a 485 watts. Two ohm run is next with a 652. Time for the dynamic power run of four ohms. And that gets us 452 watts. The two ohm run gets us 653 watts. Good job, Kenwood. Well, there you have it, guys. Wow, what do you think? I'm pretty impressed. I'm definitely happy. This is one of my favorite amplifiers to go to on so many jobs we do. Price and performance and value, it's hard to beat for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed this as always. Fernando, if you please. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night. We hope you've enjoyed this real world amp dyno. We'll see you later next time. Bye.